Welcome back everybody, my name is Brendan and I am the host here at Big Bear Beef Photography and today we're back with a second photo editing video. This one is going to be of the two photos, let's say the two photos, we took more than two photos but of the two final photos that we took over on our Coal Creek Falls Trail video that we did earlier this week. So we're going to jump on into my computer and we're going to get started editing these similar to the first one, it's going to be chill kind of relaxing walkthrough, just kind of talk to you about why I'm doing these uh, certain editing changes. It's not necessarily a tutorial, but if you learn something, that is fantastic. So we're gonna go ahead and jump on over to my computer now. All right, so here's the first photo that we took. We actually took two different photos, um, just because I, I took a test one, see, just to see if it was a good spot, and then I took one while we were on video. Um, it was the same exact, uh, composition that's the word it's the same composition the only thing that was different uh, if you go over look over here so both of them were shot at ISO 100 F at F the bet at F8 and the reason I chose F8 versus F11 or F16 is because I just wanted basically the middle part of this photo to be in sharp the not in the correct but pinpoint sharpness or crisp sharpness as you can tell at the bottom here where the leaves are and then the, the uh, creek runs off. It's in a soft focus. It's not a pinpoint sharp focus. Same with the trees behind the waterfall. It kind of goes into a soft focus. That was on purpose. That's why I chose F8 because I just wanted the the eyes to be drawn to the actual falls itself. Not necessarily with the creek running off or the trees in the background. Um, so that's why I chose F8. It's showing 0.5. It was taken at one and a half, one and a half, so half second. Uh, shutter speed. I took another one, that second one that we took on uh, camera, I took that at 1 over 1.6 uh, for the shutter speed. This one was just a little bit darker, which helped out since we already have a very bright sky that was peeking through, although it was not sunny while we were here. If you watched the video, you would know that. I was getting rained on the whole time. Camera got very wet. Um, it wasn't until after I started to hike back out that the sun came out, so that was nice, especially since it was uphill just to make it even warmer. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's where we're going with the half second exposure here, just so it makes the photo a little bit darker, and we're actually going to darken it ourselves a little bit as well. So if you've noticed with the first um, photo editing video that we did, I even mentioned it there, I like a very uh, high contrast photo. So I'm going to start off automatically by just raising the the base contrast just a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and play with the highlights and the whites just off the get-go just for basically the waterfall itself. I will put in a um, gradient mask for the top just to darken that a little bit at the end after we get everything else set. Again I'm just going to go in again I like a bit of contrast here so we're going to just raise the whites a little bit and the highlights and then Darken the shadows, darken the blacks just a little bit. We could go ahead and already see how that's changing our photo a bit. We are losing a little bit of detail here with that, but I still really like this kind of look for waterfalls. So that's why we're doing it like that. And then we can mess with the highlights themselves and the advanced contrast, just to try to bring back that detail just a little bit. But again, I really like that style of look for my uh, waterfall photographs. This is something you could do a little differently on your own if you would like. And then I'm just going to raise that up just a little bit just so it could kind of poke through a little bit of some of the waterfall, especially in the lighter areas, to um, bring back a little bit more detail. And I don't want to raise the shadows really at all, so I'm going to kind of go in the same direction as I did with the midtones. Click this eye icon and you can just see the subtle changes especially in the water with the uh the contrast the advanced contrast adjustments here to, and to already start kind of messing with the uh, extreme highlights here i'm gonna go ahead and just lower the uh the top light just a little bit if i click here you kind of see how it's changing that it's actually bringing back a little bit more detail at the very top of the waterfall not a whole lot but just a little bit Saturation is already very green. I'm not gonna mess with that. If anything, we'll mess with it a little bit in the HSL slider. But I do want to try to warm up the photo just a little bit in the highlights. Since we did take this in autumn, I want it to look a little bit more autumnal. Uh, and we'll just add a little bit 
of green to the shadows, but mainly want to have this be angered, angered, <laughs> angled more towards the highlights themselves. So just make a little subtle difference, just warm it up just a little bit, not a whole lot. We don't need a whole lot of changes here because, like I said, it was taken um, on a very rainy day, so we don't want it to look like a very bright fall day. But I am going to increase the yellows a little bit and the oranges a little bit just to really bring out all of the uh, the leaves that are covering the ground because again this this was taken in autumn so we want to make sure that that is a nice pronounced uh, feature of this photo itself and the rest of the trees i like the saturation i like the the vibrant green that's coming off of the uh the pacific northwest like focal point of being moss covered trees don't want to lose on that too much we are going to add a little bit of a vignette it's gonna look like I am really cranking this thing down though, but it's because it doesn't come in extremely hard on the edges. Honestly, when I'm going back and forth, you can't tell too much, just a very subtle um, shadow around the edge. And again, that's also to help deal with up here, but also just to draw the eyes into the waterfall itself. And then I will add a little bit of structure and a little bit of sharpness, not much. These are things you don't have to add a lot uh, really crank the slider there. They could really change how gritty a photo looks really uh, Easily so just leave that as it is and let me go ahead and reset the mask here So it already has that set and then Gradient mask I could show you where it has the mask in right now it's going to have me put it in a different one because I already had this. So let me go ahead and delete that. And we're going to go ahead and add that in separately because I already recorded the photo editing on this full on this first photo before I realized that I didn't actually hit record on the camera, but that's fine. We're just going to redo it a little bit. And then I'll add that gradient mask back in here. Click on here and you, you can see that we're not going to affect the waterfall. We are just going to affect the extreme um, highlights coming in from that sky that's peeking through. So we're just gonna drop this basically all the way down. And we're also gonna drop the shadows a bit as well, just to bring back more of the detail in that area. Go ahead and click done with that mask. I can click on here and you can see the difference before. I mean, you can see that the sun's coming in and it's a nice aspect, but I just think it is too bright. It's taking away from that waterfall. So if I just lower that a bit with that gradient slider or gradient mask, then it really just makes the whole focal point of this photo being the waterfall itself and not take, taking away too much with that highlight. So here's what we had before we made any adjustments. Not bad, but definitely needed to have, at least for me, that contrast put back in or added to the photo. Bring out a little bit more of those autumnal colors and definitely lower the highlights in the sky. And this is the final photo here. Again, lowered that the sky, really darkened the shadows, the blacks, made them pure blacks. And then in doing so, it really brought out a lot of the green and the moss and in the trees. Beautiful colors, really, really like this photo. And then for our second photo, which is technically our third, as you can see up here, uh, we took two different angles because I tried to frame the waterfall here with this root that was sticking out of the ground. And then the first one that I took, it just cut off a little bit more of the waterfall than what I was wanting. So we went ahead and took another one and I can give you that one's info. So on this one again, ISO 100, F8, because I just wanted to isolate the waterfall with a little bit of a soft focus in the foreground and in the background. And then this one was taken at 1 8th shutter speed. So a lot uh, quicker than what we did for this shot, just because we had a bit more light in at this point. Unfortunately though, when I go ahead and go into the uh, full screen on this one, you can see we had some water spots. So, like I said, the whole time, rain crashing down, I got a lot closer to the waterfall for this one, so I had the mist coming up from the waterfall. So unfortunately, it's not going to be a, a perfect photo. Um, this is definitely one that I would come back to later on, try to get this shot again. Um, but I'm just going to see what we could do to try to deal with the, uh, the water spots. We have one here, a little bit of one over here. It's like there might be a little 
little haze. There's just gonna be some hazy spots, unfortunately. Um, but it's a waterfall, so you could say it was an artistic choice. <laughs> uh, not necessarily that that's gonna be true, but uh, you can say that. So we're gonna kind of edit this one very similarly to the, the previous one, raising that contrast a little bit. Uh, we might not raise the highlights much because there isn't a whole lot of detail here in the top. Um, if, if anything, we might actually even lower the highlights a little bit. Just kind of see if that helps bring these down at all. And just go down just a little bit. Shadows will darken the shadows. Not as much in this one, I think, as the, the first one. The whites. We'll lower that a little bit as well. Blacks will lower a little bit, not as much. Again, the, uh, the first one. So let's see if we can bring back a little bit more contrast with this waterfall here. Try to just get a little bit more of that detail back in the photo. Let's lower the mid tone slider just a little bit. I feel like that kind of cranked the... Uh, saturation just a little bit too much let's see what we're looking at here for after getting a little bit more detail back in the photo i don't think we really need to change much in terms of top and bottom i might lower the bottom light just a little bit uh, kind of in the opposite way of the first one where i feel like it's a little bit bright down here i want to pull the uh, the view towards the uh, main part of the falls. Just curious about the dehaze if that would help those spots at all. And I I tried before if I just put in a um, a mask for it and it it really didn't help too much. Uh, so again, like the first one, we're gonna try to warm up the photo just a little bit in the highlights, make it look a little bit more autumnal. I believe that's the proper term, autumnal autumn looking <laughs> uh, yeah. add a little bit some green in the highlights again not much definitely make it more towards the highlights you see that that just kind of warmed up the photo a little bit it was looking a little cool over here which matches uh, the fact that it was raining but I want to bring in a little bit more of that orange there we'll do a similar HSL adjustment here with the orange and the yellow. It's a subtle change, but it makes a big impact, especially over here where the, the cloudy sun, the sun was hitting directly. And then let's try to play with this polarizer slider here just a little bit. Try to pull back a little bit more of that detail. Again, we'll go with a little bit of a vignette here. Not as much as the first one, but just a little bit. And then we will add a little bit of structure again and a little bit of sharpening. So we can see here what the photo looked like. First, waterfall blown out a little bit. I could have slowed down the um, or quickened the shutter speed a little bit just to kind of deal with that um, kind of overpowering some of the detail of the falls um, but I still think overall turned out pretty nicely again really wish we could have I could have noticed the uh, the water spot I didn't actually even notice that I had the water spot on there until I was uh, putting the camera up saw that there was a bunch of water on the lens just ended up kind of kind of blurring the photo here really over here it's not not that bad. Uh, kind of blends in a little bit with some of the pine needles, but that spot is uh, that one's not great. But this is definitely a spot I will definitely go back to. Might even bring the camera lady along that time so she could see this beautiful, wa beautiful waterfall and uh, probably try to take this one again as long as the root is here. Because again, the only reason I took this photo was because the root was coming in right along here and framing that waterfall very nicely. But yeah, so those are the two photos that we are editing here today. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording on that because last time it went on for a long time after. Um, yeah, so these are the two photos that we edited here today. Um, let me know down in the comment section below which one is your favorite if you've ever taken a photo. 
got home really excited to edit it and then find out that you have a water smudge all over the photo. Uh, that was a little bit of a disappointment, but the first photo, the vertical one, was definitely my favorite one of this shoot. And it was a fun aspect trying to get that framing to work. I had walked all around this waterfall, except on the top. It was way too muddy and wet to try to climb up to the top. Um, but it was real fun kind of surveying the area to find a nice, uh, it's a, more of a unique uh, composition because obviously the first one is a very typical, um, I'll say typical, but it's the first thing you're going to think of. You get to the waterfall, you got to capture that waterfall. So what's the best way to do that? Flip the camera vertically, show the full waterfall going down. Still really like it, but it didn't have like a leading line going to the waterfall or any sort of uh, specialized uh, composition tool, I guess you could say, to really focus in on that waterfall besides its beauty itself. That's what we did with the second one. Of course, the water, the smudge kind of messed with that a little bit, but we'll definitely be going back to this place in the future. This might be a fun one to even go to like in the, uh, in the winter, if it frosts over at all, that might be a really fun shoot. So I'll keep that one in mind for this one. Like I said, let me know down in the comment section below which one was your favorite. Also make sure that you're subscribing because I have another on location video coming for you guys next week, as well as another photo editing video. So make sure you guys are staying along. I appreciate you being here. I hope you enjoyed. Have a fun day. Bye.